Remember this book? Yeah. The Believe It Book for Loving Everyone? I know that's what Bible stands for, Believe It Book for Living, Loving Everyone. No, you taped that all on. No, I didn't. And we read some stories from it that I did not tape into it. Remember? We read some stories? About creation? That was awesome, right? Well, I got a story today that's not actually from, it, it isn't actually from this book, but it's about this book. See, there's this guy, and his name's Mark, and he wrote a book called Does God Have a Big Toe? That is, that is an interesting question. You have big toes. Does God have a big toe? Yes. yes. Yeah? Maybe God has a big toe, too. Maybe he has two of them. Maybe she has two of them. Maybe they have two of them. Maybe they have four. Who knows? It's good to wonder about those things, though, right? And what he did was he wrote a bunch of stories about some of the stories in the Bible. So there's a story in the Believe It book for Loving Everyone about how there was a great flood. Yes, it rained. And what happened was that God had kind of decided... It was like, you know, we told that story about the great artist one time, about how, how creation is kind of like God was a great artist and just painted this amazing thing that is creation. And so that story is kind of about how if God was a great artist, you know how sometimes you're not really... You're kind of disappointed in how things happen or, or you're not okay with it and you want to start again, but maybe like some of it... And so you maybe wash a little bit of a way. That's what, that's what the Great Flood story is kind of about. So, Mr. Gelman here wrote a really interesting story about that story. And this is a story about the animals in the story. Okay? So what happened was, uh, God made everything like an artist would make a picture. So it was beautiful and everything was good, but it didn't stay like that. And God was pretty disappointed and sad. God was sad. So God decided, like an artist sometimes does, that God needed a do-over. You know, like sometimes you're painting a picture and just it's not right somehow, so you might wash it away and start again. And that's pretty much what God decided to do. But God knew one guy whose name was Noah and his family. And they were good. And the animals were all good, so he told Noah to build a big boat and take two of every animal on the big boat and they'd be okay. Except, nobody told the animals what was going on. So when Noah started building the ark, and it started to rain a lot, the animals were afraid. So the animals had a big meeting. What? Oh, no, that's a church board meeting. Um, it, it, probably, it probably didn't look like that. It probably looked more like this. Yeah, more like that. That's better. So they decided that they'd best talk to God about what was going on. But what about the ginormous girl that fell out in the tree already? Maybe they thought that they should talk to God too. And... Because maybe then, see, they could convince God to not do the start over thing again. Right? So maybe if they asked nice, God would stop the rain. But none of them knew where God lived. So they all flew and they flopped and they rolled and they ran and they jerked and they jumped and they crept and they crawled and they slid and they slid to all the different places that they thought God lived. So the elephant, the elephant said, I'm the biggest animal I know, but God must be bigger than me. So surely I will find God in the biggest thing. The elephant came to a tall mountain. This is the biggest thing around, so it must be God. And the elephant asked the mountain to make the rain stop. Do you think the rain stopped? No. Well, then the eagle said, I can fly higher than any animal, but God must be able to fly higher than me. So surely I will find God in the highest thing. So the eagle flew higher and higher, far higher than any bird had ever flown before. And he saw a big, fluffy white cloud that was even higher than he could go. And he said, this is the highest thing, so it must be God. And the eagle asked the cloud to make the rain stop. Awkwardly, it did not. Because Exactly. That's where the, cloud, the rain comes from, right? Awkward. 
Well, then the lion said, my roar is the loudest animal sound, but God must be louder than me. So surely I will find God in the loudest thing. So the lion roared and roared and roared and roared. And suddenly, some of the clouds gathered together and they turned black and they sent out thunder and lightning. Whoa, this is the loudest thing, said the lion. So it must be God. And the lion asked the thunder to make the rain stop. Do you think it stopped? No. no, it did not. The rain did not stop. And soon the elephant realized that the mountain wasn't God because the mountain didn't answer. And soon the eagle realized that the cloud wasn't God because it blew away. And soon the lion realized that the thunder wasn't God because it stopped its rumbling. And soon all the animals were yelling, we have to find God or we're done for. The rain just won't stop. Well, then the fish spoke up. The fish hadn't been invited to the meeting because, well, the meeting was on land and they were in the water. So that was awkward, but, you know, that's the way it is. And the fish said, <laughs> which was also awkward at first. But then somebody translated for them. And it turned out what the fish were saying was, in the oceans and the seas and the rivers and the lakes where we live, Water is everywhere. There's water above and water below. There's water all around. If the water is everywhere, then we believe that God must be everywhere too. When God heard what the fish said, because God hears everything, the rain stopped and the clouds moved away and the world shone like it always should. And then God spoke to all the animals and God said, I will keep the rain until the ark is finished. And when it is, then two of every kind of animal and bird and plant and tree will join Noah's family on the ark so that when the world starts over, you can start over again too. But as for the fish, I will save all of them because only they knew where to find me. Only the fish knew that I'm always with you everywhere. In the air that you breathe, the sky that you soar in, the land that you walk on, and most especially, the water that keeps everything living alive. I guess the fish are smart. Fish are smart.